It came out of nowhere. He didn't even expect it. That's the great thing about boxing. That's what makes it so sexy is that you never know what's going to happen until you know. I've just stopped someone who's never been stopped, who's got an absolute iron chin. I was winning the fight. I was dominating the fight. I was comfortable and then it's over. I told you so. Don't ever doubt me. How did we get here? What the hell happened? We're baying for blood in that arena. The satisfying thing to, to see him stumbling around the ring. It was like I was told I couldn't do that. Did I underestimate him a little bit? Maybe. That upset, it wasn't supposed to happen. I have to win. I can't lose to a man twice. I start training for the 12 round war if needs be. I'm still the better man. I'm going to control the fight and then when it's time I'm going to take you out. Repeat or revenge? Oh, repeat. Revenge or revenge? Those are the two options. Liam, we're here, the rematch is on. What words come to mind when you think back to the first fight? Um, I told you so. You know, don't ever doubt me. Stuff like that, just just good to run. Pam a couple of words down, a couple of people's toes. How would you describe the atmosphere? Obviously, it was electric in there when you ring walked. How would you describe it from your point of view? Um, hostile, dangerous. Yeah, exciting, um, fiery, it was hot. People were, you know, they were baying for blood in that arena. Oh, unbelievable, electric, uh, you know, special, special. It was, it was a special night and it was a special atmosphere. What was going through your mind then when you first looked him in the eye, when you jumped over the ropes and stared into his eyes? It's no different to any other fight. I'm going to get in here, I'm going to have fun, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to control the fight and then when it's time I'm going to take you out. And everything was going to plan completely until that, uh, you know, that lull in concentration in the fourth round, which, you know, um, which, you know, became the end of the fight. You know, I was winning the fight, I was dominating the fight, I was comfortable and then it's over. I'm looking around like, what the hell? What the hell happened? Let me go, let me continue. Nope, it's done. Okay, what can I do? We're gonna get the rematch. Look, there was, there was a couple of stages of the ring walk, obviously, you know, it was wow. When I walked out, the reception I got, you know, I, 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 I milked the start of it, but then obviously once it was ring walk time, once I got down the ramp, it was game face and, you know, wait for Chris to do his, and then say, so once we got in the ring, it was just, it, 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 you know, it was fight time, I switch on. And I, I think that's what, you know, I'm, I think I'm one of the best at, to be honest with you, going from laughing, smiling, enjoying me ring walk to game face, let's go now. What, what was going through your mind then when you looked at him, when you looked at him? Look, I just thought, right, let's go, we're here now, no turning back, we're here. Like, let's go, let's fight, and I think it's just, you know, it's a scary time for some fighters, but for me, it's just, once I know I've done everything, I think, let's go, let's fight, let's see, let's see, let's see who the best is. Were you surprised by it happening so quickly in the fight? Of course. You hit a guy with six or seven uppercuts in the third round. Uh, you, you know, he hasn't landed a shot on you for the for the entire first three rounds, and then in the fourth round, the referee's looking at you saying, "No, no more." What the hell happened? How did we get here? Um, yeah, very shocking. Uh, like I said, there's no Chris just started to play the reaction like the the, the celebrations. I was just surprised with. Again, I'd be honest, I was surprised he went how he went with the shot it was. Like, again, it's not like I've, it was a combination. It was just fluent and accurate and for him to go down and get up. And it was that, that's more the satisfying thing to, to see him stumbling around the ring. It was like I was told I couldn't do that. So that was the reason for the celebration, you know. And regardless, I've just stopped someone who's never been stopped, who's got an absolute iron chin by everyone's accounts. When you landed those uppercuts, was that a particular point where you thought, I I've hurt him here? Yeah, I've hurt him, I'm, I'm controlling the fight, I'm, I'm dominating, uh, my game plan is working. All those things are going through your head when you have such a dominant round. 
um, which is what makes you know the fourth round even more crazy because you know it's not like I got beaten up for three rounds and then knocked out like you know he was he was uh, he was losing the fight so um, yeah it was it was very it was extremely unexpected. Did you notice the particular point where you hurt him? Um, yeah, the first right hand. You know, when he come up, he, he, he comes up high, and I just think he's looking at the floor when I nail him with it. Um, and then just the, the, the combination followed after that, the left of the cuts, right hand, left hook. Um, was the fourth round then particularly, was that the point where you started to notice it go your way or was it just a bit of a, a complete shock to you? No, it, it came out of nowhere. You guys all saw what happened. Um, he, you know, he didn't even expect it. You know, nobody expected that to happen. But that's the great thing about boxing, that's what makes it so sexy is that um, you never know what's going to happen until you know. Was there any points before that where you thought, like, I've got him here, I'm moving him around, I've got him here where I want him? I just thought I, was, I kept getting me more and more time into the fight, more and more judging the distance of his, of his jab, but then round one was the point I thought, you are terrified to get hit, I'm going to nail you in a minute, see your reaction, and then you know, when I did nail him, his reaction went great, so he can say all he wants and he can beat around the bush all he wants. Everything I thought in that fight I was right with. I thought he was terrified of getting hit and I thought I'm going to nail you in a minute, see your reaction. And when I did nail him, his reaction went great. So everything I thought during the fight, you know, I, I was right. There's been talk of an elbow. Was it an elbow? You, all you have to do is watch the replay. You know, I've been, I've been punched in the face many times. I've never had a ball under my eye that big before off of one blow. Um, now we're going into the rematch. There's been a lot of talk from his side about an elbow. Was it an elbow? No. Oh. Uh, even, even when you watch it back, my glove skims off and my wrist hits him like it's, it's laughable. It's, no, it's just crispy and crisp. If it was that bad at elbow, you know, they, they, they all filed an appeal. They said they were going to appeal it, but no appeal was filed because it was that laughable. How would you describe Liam after you fought him? Uh, how would I describe him? Listen, he's, uh, he, he's, he's a smooth operator. He knows what he's doing in the ring. He knows how to get through these fights. Uh, he, knows how to, he knows how to cause upsets. And that's what that fight was, in my opinion. Huge upset. Uh, you have to respect a man like that. You know, and I, I always, I always respected him. I respect every fighter I get in the ring with. But now I have, you know, now I have uh, an awareness and an alertness about me when it comes to this man that maybe wasn't there before. Uh, like I said, look, personality away from the ring again. He is what he is, and we don't need to go into all that. I've said enough things about Chris, but you know, in, in the fight, I respect him as a fighter. That's why I train the way I train. That's why I train the way I train again now. I'm not just gonna think it's an easy fight, I'm not going to be 50% and think, oh, I'll, I'll land the shot. I'll turn up 100%, I'll beat Chris again, and again, I'm turning up 100%, I've got 12 rounds, I'm confident I'll catch him and I'll hit him again. So what's the key to success for you in the rematch? Um, don't, give him the, don't give this guy any openings, you know. Um, don't give him another, any, any, any opportunity to do what he did in that last fight. Um, Stay on him, stay in control. Don't take your eye off the target. Don't get complacent. You know, these are all things that I learned. Mm, Liam Smith being Liam Smith, you know, staying away from the cameras to the best I can be. You know, and, and me, at the best of my ability, beat Chris Eubank Jr. I said it all along. I've said it since the day the fight was made. I turn up at my best. I beat Chris. I'm a better fighter than Chris. And now I'm a better middleweight than Chris too. Why will it be different then in the rematch? Because it has to be different. I have no other choice. Um, there, you know, there wasn't there wasn't much of a pressure on me in that first fight. Uh, you know, it was kind of just, all right, listen, I need to fight somebody. I need to fight a name before I can, you know, stop fighting these big these big names out and Smith is a big name in his own right but there's obviously you know there's some marquee names out there that I'm supposed to be fighting so you know, I need to fight some before I get to them let's get Liam Smith in here he's a good fighter he knows what he's doing former world champion um, you know 
Uh, did I underestimate him a little bit? Maybe, maybe, maybe I did. Um, but what is for certain is that uh, there will be no underestimating, there will be no complacency uh, in the build up to this fight, in my preparation, in my mindset. Um, I have to win. I can't lose to a man twice, you know. That, that upset, that's what you can call it, an upset. It wasn't supposed to happen. I'm still the better man. If he does it twice, he's a better fighter than me. And I have to live with that and sleep with that for the rest of my life. And that, uh, that I cannot let happen. So why will it be the same result then? It's a lean from it when regardless, I'll train for the, for, for the 12 round war if needs be. But I'm just confident now, whatever way Chris plays, now I'm massively confident now because you know, Sam's come and fight me then, but you're there to be it and you, I've hurt you, I've dropped you. You can't, you can't hurt me. No one knows whether you can hurt me. You've hit me with your six uppercuts, like you like to say, and you didn't even make me take a backward step. Never mind hurt me or buzz me. So, you know, if he comes to fight like that, he's even easier to catch. If he tries to box me, I know I can cut the ring down and get to him that way. So I'm confident in, in, in that, but regardless of that situation, I'll train as the best Chris Eubank Jr. for the 12-round fight and I'm, I'm, I'm a better fighter than Chris. Revenge or repeat? Revenge or revenge. Those are the two options. Perfect, good luck. Repeat or revenge? Oh, repeat, one million percent. Right, nice one, good luck. Sorry, thanks.